Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is March 26, and most may or may not know, it's National Epilepsy Awareness Day. So on this day, I like to share just I guess, some info and insight on the disorder itself. As many might or might know, um, epilepsy is a neurological disorder in which the brain's neurons misfire and in return it causes a seizure. Now all seizures are different. You can have um, clonic tonic which are classic seizures that people think about. You have um, petty malls which are mild. You have absent seizures. All different types and they all affect people differently. And the best way to really kind of get a bird's view of these different types and how they affect people is do your research. So, um, I've been living with epilepsy since 2016. And uh, it's had its ups and downs. It's had its pros and cons. And I do everything I can to stay on top of my illness and stick on top of taking my medication that is the key thing is when you're diagnosed that you stay on your medication you evaluate it you stay in touch with your doctors and let them know of any signs or symptoms or differences or if you've had a seizure you know it's always always good to keep your doctor informed on what's going on um Always inform people of your illness and what to do in case you are to have a seizure. And have them have a, I guess, information on, like, if you have, like, a um, bracelet, you know, a medical bracelet. Let them know where that's at and the number to call if you were to have a seizure. You know, it's always important to inform friends or family whenever you're out in public. And to wear some kind of device that informs people that you do have epilepsy, the type you have, and who to contact. Um, that's pretty much all I can think of. Um, as far as families of epileptics, or I should say people with epilepsy, you know, the best thing you can do is just be there, be supportive, try to understand the person's illness, and gain as much knowledge as you can about it because it's it's a very vigorous illness and I think the hardest thing about it is nobody sees what's going on on the inside you know it's it's not like when you have a physical um, illness you know you don't you know with somebody that might be crippled or missing a limb or have um, like cancer or AIDS or anything, there's, there's not really a lot of, um, symptoms or, you know, outside type of symptoms that show you what exactly is going on in this person's body. So that's the hard thing with epilepsy is you can't just crack open in the brain and just find out what's going on and seeing the brain misfire and neurons going all over the place you can't do that all you can do is see it on the EEG and some people you know react different when they have seizures some people have um out of context type of behavior uh, some people might stare blankly you know kind of like in an abyss type of thing and be unresponsive some people can still have a seizure and still be able to function, you know. Some people will have mild little jerks or ticks or shakes when they have them, which are myoclonics. Um, I have those. Mine's considered juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, and mine are mainly at night if I have them. they just tiny little jerks I might get in my arms, legs, or sometimes my whole body is jerked. So it just, it really depends on the type of epilepsy, depends on the person, how their brain works, 
you know, it's many, many factors play into epilepsy and, you know, what it does to the person's body. It takes on a toll on just everywhere. You know, it's not just your body. It's not just your mind. It's, it affects everything. It affects your emotions. It affects your, you know, your feelings, your thoughts, um, your outlook. It affects a wide range of things. And, you know, it's sometimes it can, some people, it's hard to function day to day because they may have maybe four to five seizures a day, you know. It's, and that's scary, you know. Some people are limited to where they can't drive. Um, they can't work. You know, not saying all people. But, you know, it can be, it can be limited with people and making it hard for them to live a normal life, you know. But people still try to live as normal life as possible with this illness. You know, it's, it's all in the degree of epilepsy that you have. I'm very fortunate that mine's not very vigorous. It's a very mild case. And my medicine does awesome to keep seizures at bay. Um, I've not had a grand mal since 2016. I've had um, myoclonics and petty malls, whatever you want to call them, as well. And, um, you know, I've not had a grand mal since 2016, and I feel very blessed and thankful I haven't, because those type can really put you down for a few days. They're, they're not fun. There's been people that have been very badly hurt when they have them. You know, they injure other parts of their body when they have them. They sometimes will be a little foggy the first few days when they have them. Kind of just disoriented and not feeling themselves. Which is normal, you know. So, and the, and the best thing is if you see someone having a seizure, you put them on their side. You lay something underneath their head so they're not banging their head against the ground or floor. You time the seizure and wait for that person to come out of it and just check and check their pulse. You can try and talk to them and see if they regain cognition and ability to think. You know, you just got to give them time. It's, it takes a wear and tear on the body. You know, let them lay there. Don't try to get them up as fast as you, you know, as soon as they wake up. You know, don't, don't try to move them. Just leave them be and watch your room. If you think you need to call 911, call 911. Um, make sure, you know, if, if they have like a rescue medicine to bring them out of the seizure, like, um, oh, hemp oil or whatever it's called. You know, a lot of people, if they're in the middle of a seizure, they'll have you, it's like a little liquid and it's like CBD oil, I think. And you can, like, put it in their mouth, and it'll help bring them out of that seizure. Some people do have that. They do have a prescription for it. And that's that's pretty much it, you know. Um, like I said, and check their medical bracelets. See if they have any information as far as who to contact, um, what medicines they are, they are on. And it's, that's pretty much the basics um, as far as... Epilepsy and what to do if you witness it, you know, just, and the main thing is to stay calm. It is, you, you got to stay calm and stay focused and pay attention to what's going on with this person. I know it's easier said than done, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's a disease that can be managed. It's not the best. It sucks. I know I've got it and. It, you know, and it takes a toll on your memory. That's, I think it's one of the hardest things is, you know, not just the medicine also, you know, that takes a toll on your body as well. People may have bad reactions to them. People may have like foggy brain majority of the time because of all the medicine they're on and not able to think straight. Um, I've had my bouts with medicine and, you know, I was on Capra. It. Destroyed my life. Not gonna lie. Destroyed my life. To pieces. And that's why I don't take any more. But I'm not discouraging the medicine. I'm not discouraging any medicine. Everyone reacts differently to medication. 
So it doesn't mean it's bad or good. It depends on your chemical, chemi you know, your chemistry in your body. So it, the best thing to do is just experiment, keep in contact with your doctor as far as your reaction to medication, and find out what works with you. That's the best thing you can do. Some people have even had operations where they move that part of the brain that has the uh, misfires that causes the epilepsy. And there's many different, you know, hemispheres of the brain that it can affect. It can affect your occipital lobe, your frontal lobe, your, um, you know, left side, right side, the back of your back of your brain, and that's um, your cerebrum. It just it depends. Depends where yours are at, and you know, there's different triggers. Some people can't be around. Um, flashing lights or it triggers them some people can't be around certain maybe sounds or smells it might trigger them it's it all depends on the person but the best thing to do is to research if you have epilepsy or diagnosed or have a friend or family member that's been diagnosed do your research and be supportive because this illness isn't easy it's it's not um i had a horrible time when I was first diagnosed. And it took a lot to overcome what happened after my seizure and what led up to me having a seizure. I wasn't diagnosed till I was 31 years old. I had a really bad head-on collision that caused me to have my seizure. And according to my doctor, I'd had epilepsy my whole life, but it just didn't surface with a grain mall until... I was 31 years old and had this wreck. So, you know, epilepsy can lay dormant in your body. Or you might have as very mild seizures to where you don't even know that they're seizures. And I believe that's what mine were as a kid. Because I would go numb on the right side of my body and it would feel like a panic attack. And more than likely, those were very mild seizures that I was having or auras. And auras are usually symptoms that you have leading up to a seizure. So, it's just a little bit of information as far as epilepsy, since it's National Epilepsy Awareness Day. And, you know, purple is the signature color for it. And, uh, you know, that's about all I, all I can say. So, I hope you enjoy this video and leave a comment or a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks.